indigo, a plant called Indigofera tinctoria, from which a dye was extracted. Indigo, the dye that created brilliant blue cloth that became the toast of European fashion. Indigo, one of the earliest items of British trade in India, whose lucrative cultivation traveled to new colonies in America and the Caribbean. It was valued export since the times of the Mughal Emperor Jahangir. Later British interests in Manchester's flourishing textile industry revived its plantation in Bengal, especially when America was no longer a colony and Caribbean planters achieved higher profits in sugar and coffee. The history of indigo cultivation tells the dark history of how mercantile capital and colonialism joined hands with feudalism. Sharecroppers were reduced to slavery in a plantation economy. Land and agricultural productivity was diverted by force from food grains to cash crops. British indigo planters leased land from the zemindars with tenants or traditional sharecroppers. The indigo planter, or Neil Sahib as he was known, would first cajole or coax the tillers of the land to plant indigo. The land was usually spread out within a cluster of 10 to 15 villages, which was then dotted by one principal and several subsidiary factories. Because of its dependence on rainfall, only two crops of indigo a year, in autumn and spring, was possible in eastern India. Cultivation time was short, dye factory owners demanded more and more, so the peasantry were burdened by impossible targets of production. In a good season, 6,000 acres could produce perhaps 600 chests, valued at 50,000 sterling, half of which was profits. In 1810, 6 million pounds of indigo was brought to England. Two-thirds of it, more than 4 million pounds, had been grown in Bengal. The highest yield came from the Nadia and Jessor districts, where yearly production was worth over two million rupees at that time. <laughs> the produce is measured according to the abnormally high yields fixed by the planter. The advance taken for sowing was deducted. The further loan only coaxed peasants into a debt trap from which there was no escape. An impoverished peasantry was pushed over the brink into starvation and penury. Most indigo planters were crude and brutish men who used every means to cow down the peasantry from village to rape. It is this social disaster that is reflected in the 19th century Bengali play called Neil Dorpur. A mirror to indigo. In 1859, the peasants in Bengal and Bihar rose up in the indigo rebellion with little but native handmade arms. When its cultivation stopped in independent America, indigo continued to be remembered as the devil's dye to hundreds and thousands of peasants in Bengal and Bihar. A devil from whose grasp there was no means of freedom, but desperate armed insurrection. The war cry of the rebellion, we will give our lives 
but we will not sow our land with indigo, was extinguished, along with the flames of a suppressed civil war. Yet when Dinoondha Mitro wrote his play Neel Darpun, the fire had not gone out. The reformer, Ishwar Chandra Vidyashagor, inspired its English translation by the great poet Michael Mudhushudan Dattu for a wider readership, and the British colonialists could not prevent its publication by the missionary Reverend James Long. Though the Supreme Court imprisoned Long in 1860 and imposed a hefty fine, it was paid by a contemporary writer of great renown, Kali Prasunna Singhu. The book found readers all over the world, and the dark secret of indigo was revealed. The press continued the battle with the relentless leadership of Akhay Dattu in his Bengali Dattu Bodhini Putrika. and in the english hindu patriot of horish chandra mukhopadhyay the indigo commission of 1860 under the just and humane leadership of w s setton kerr was the intervention of the british crown long after humane british administrators like ashley eden herschel and sir john peter grant had officially condemned the blatant barbarism Three years later, in 1863, the infamous Indigo Contracts Act was abolished. The peasantry could no longer be forced into the cultivation of indigo. It was finally science that brought an end to the dark social history of indigo. In 1895, the German chemical manufacturer Bayer discovered aniline artificial dyes, which were much cheaper than vegetable dye. Indigo cultivation is a horrifying memory. The violence of colonial oppression and the counter-violence of peasant rebellions have both disappeared into the pages of history.